Arlington, Texas, where the U.S. is getting ready for their opener against Bolivia here in Copa America 2024. After that, it's off to Atlanta, Georgia to take on Panama. And then the group phase finale, July 1st, against Uruguay in Kansas City. Uh, the U.S. right now second favorites to win the group behind Uruguay. Uh, let's talk about that home field advantage, her, because I feel like this has been a topic simmering in American soccer for a long time, but I very specifically remember the Costa Rica game in the qualifying cycle for 2018. Oh, we were there. We were there. When they lost in New Jersey, and everybody made a big deal about all the Costa Ricans yeah. uh, that were there. You think it will have an impact in this tournament? With Bolivia? No. In this tournament? In maybe. this tournament. It, Let's more, leave it open. Obviously yeah. not, not maybe in Bolivia and Arlington. Yeah, um, maybe you won't see it against Uruguay yeah. in Kansas City, but there's a good chance you're going to see it in the knockout rounds, whether that's Colombia or Brazil. Does it matter? Um, absolutely. It, it absolutely matters. That's a home team for Colombia or, or Brazil. Uh, two very well-traveled uh, fan bases. Brazil being one of the best well-traveled fan bases in the world. Um, it has a massive impact. You, you don't want to feel like you're playing an away game every time you play. And that could be something come knockout rounds on if you're fortunate enough to advance. That will happen because those powerhouse teams with those great fan bases will be there. Um, it's a very unique situation, Shaq, because mm -hmm. I, I don't know of many other national teams around the world that have to deal with that. Nope. It doesn't happen anywhere else around the world. Um, it, it's going to happen to the U.S. men's national team when they play against certain teams here, and it does have its effect. Now, should it affect them against Bolivia and Texas? Absolutely not. And if you think that's going to be a factor and an important factor, um, you're grossly mistaken. Now, if you can't deal with a Bolivian team that's in the stands, probably going to be no better than you. And on the field, certainly on paper, will be no better than you. Um, if we talk about teams that need that home field advantage, Bolivia and the Copa America would be one of them. Mm -hmm. 1963 and 1997, closest uh, they've been to, what, one time they actually won it in the 60s. And in 97, runner-up, both times were taking advantage of the altitude in La Paz. Uh, you should be able to handle uh, one of the worst teams in South American qualifying historically. You shouldn't need a home crowd to beat a team like Bolivia. But certainly going on, knockout rounds forward, it, it's an issue. You think it could be a disadvantage for the United States, or are we make no excuses question. before they're needed? No, it's, it's a disadvantage. I, I, it, at the very least, in, in, in theory, um, in, if not in practice, the, the big difference between playing home and away is the fans in, in, the, in the stands. The pitch is the same size, the goal is the same size. Um, the big difference between a home game and an away game is, is, is the support that, that's coming from, from the, the, the terraces around you. If that's taken away, then yes, absolutely, the U.S., though technically on home soil, it will feel very much, and players will be affected as, as though it were an, an away game. Um, and, and that for me, is, is that, that for me, as this tournament goes on, will become more of an issue. To, to, her, to her point, do not use that as an excuse against yeah. Bolivia. Yeah. Bolivia sitting second bottom in common ball qualifying right now with one point. The second bottom only because Peru can't get a single point. Um, so if you cannot get the better of Bolivia home, away, mm -hmm. in the parking lot, then there's questions to be, to be asked that I'm, I'm not sure anybody's prepared to answer right now. Later on, we can use it. Later on, it becomes a factor. But right now, absolutely not. And it's a great game for you to start with. You think it'll ever change? Will it ever change? Yeah, that the Certainly US will. will like feel comfortable, feel like the home. Yeah, there's only team one way to change. There's only one their... way to change that. How's that? People love a winner. Mm. You win games, people are going to convert. Um, a majority of those fans are American. They're American fans. They happen to cheer for other national teams because of their heritage. But they're American fans. You do not disregard, disregard that. So you can convert these fans. Make them into El Equipo de Todos, everybody's team, which was once the slogan of uh, U.S. soccer. You can do that, but it's going to take winning. It's going to take convincing. It's, it's, it's very good to sit here and say the golden generation, the golden generation, the golden generation. They've got to do something. And once they do it, they'll start converting people. When it comes down to winning, Goalkeepers usually play a pretty big role in that. Uh, let's talk about Matt Turner. Shaka, where's our, where's our confidence level in Matt Turner as a goalie based on what we've seen in the last six months, which I think includes, you know, the, the benching at Forest and all the time not played on that Forest bench? Uh, not great, in all, in all honesty. Um, listen, I, I, I maintain I think Matt Turner is an incredibly talented goalkeeper. Um, I, I questioned his, his move to Arsenal. I, I felt... Um, 
play. I felt he needed minutes. He needed to make mistakes away from the spotlight and, and grow in that position. Um, but he went to Arsenal, made a couple of high-profile mistakes there. Then all of a sudden, even though you go to a smaller club and the spotlight is nowhere near as big, the pressure is nowhere as big, that follows you. That reputation, for, so you, even though you make what may, otherwise would have been expected errors in growing in, in, in the position for a smaller club, it, 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 it's more telling or, or covered uh, more, more scathingly. And then every goalkeeper has been there. <laughs> I, I certainly have. And what was always my escape is coming back and play with the national team. Mm -hmm. And I think you saw that with Matt Tuna. Even though he was out of the team, be it at Arsenal or Forest or wherever else, he would come back and have these standout performances for the US men's national team. And then over the last couple of months, you've seen even those start to wane. And that is why I, I, have, I have those concerns. I thought going into, again, even though his club form wasn't great, going into the World Cup, I, th I thought you saw the best of Matt Turner for the US. I can't say that right now. And that's a concern when you have, when you've been having those, that rough patch with your club, and all of a sudden, you're, you're mirroring that with the national team. He obviously got shelled her against Colombia. The Brazil game gives us this statistical anomaly, which is 11 saves and a historic night. But even the goal in that game that they concede comes off of his mistake. Where are you on Turner right now? So I know what Shaka's talking about. And it's one thing to play in CONCACAF or a powerhouse uh, nation within CONCACAF because the U.S. will win the majority of games mm -hmm. in CONCACAF. And to feel confident about yourself, you see there, 41 games, 24 assists. It's a pretty uh, good clean ratio. Sheets. Yeah. I'm sorry, clean yeah. sheets, apologies. If you had 24 assists, that'd be <laughs> 20, damn impressive. 24, <laughs> 24 clean sheets. That's a pretty good record that, for a goalkeeper. Uh, the problem is, uh, you mentioned going to a small club. I actually think it's... Not enforced to me. It's a small club, maybe on paper, but it's a historic club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Massive, no, no, you know, yeah. There's a lot of pressure. You're yeah. in a relegation battle. If there, are, to, for my money, two positions that you don't want to have confidence issues in, it's your number nine in front of goal, mm -hmm. and it's your number one in goal. You've got to be confident. That's not been the issue for him at Forest. He's been in, he's been out, often out. It affects your psyche. He comes to the U.S. Men's National, where I think Shaka hit the nail on the head. You can use that as a refresher. Like we've seen who. Christian Pulisic used the U.S. Men's National as a refresher. He needs it. He wants it. Gio Reyna, same type of deal. This is different. I can be myself here. I think Matt Turner's got that going for him. But certainly more performances like against Brazil will do wonders for him. Because at the World Cup, at the highest of levels, he did set a record. Two clean sheets at the World Cup in four games. For as many great goalkeepers as the U.S. Men's National Team has had in their history, he's the only goalkeeper to do that. He obviously needs a move as well. I mean, Force is adding goalkeepers seemingly uh, every week. Let's say he has a good Copa America, Shaka. What do you think his level is at club? Because moving forward, even if we start to think about 2026, you can't have Matt Turner yeah. uh, on the bench leading into that tournament. If he's going to be your number one, you've got to get him some minutes in the next 18 months. I listen, I, I, think, I think Matt Turner is certainly good enough to be playing in one of the top five European leagues. Premier League good enough? Because um, so far the answer has been no. I'm not, I'm not sure Premier League, because right now, and, and to your point, um, you, you, hit the, hit, you hit these stumbles uh, for Nottingham Forest. Nobody any higher than Nottingham Forest is now going to take that chance right. on you. So now, if you stay Premier League, you're in a relegation battle, where again, all those mistakes are magnified, the prior mistakes kind of follow you, and your reputation takes a hit. So maybe it, the need is to break from, well, top flight English football and find, find meaningful minutes elsewhere. Listen, it's, it's a part of the process. A part of the process of being a professional footballer doesn't matter the, the position, is making mistakes and learning from them. When you're a goalkeeper, more times than not, when you do make a mistake, it ends up in the back of the net. But you have to make those mistakes and play your way through it. And that was always my concern when he, went to, when he goes to a club like Arsenal. You aren't expected to make, you're, you're expected to be the finished article when you're playing for Arsenal. And that for me was, was telling on his own progression as, as, a, as a top flight goalkeeper. Part of the issue with the mistakes is, is Matt Turner is a shot stopper. He's not a player that's going to play with his feet. Uh, when the U.S. Men's National needed that player, it was Zach Steffen. In fact, we had Matt Turner on this very show tell us that 
Zach Steffen is the number one because Greg Berhalter went with him on the most important of games, whether it was right. Costa Rica or the U.S., both U.S. games. He Mexico would, oh, games, yeah. I'm sorry, Mexico games. He would always go with Zach Steffen. Um, he's in a situation where the mistakes he's made have been with his feet. Canada World Cup qualifying. He plays right now for a manager who's going to keep asking him to play that's, out, to play that's out an back issue. with his that's feet. That's an issue. And, and quite frankly, um, even if that mistake is made where he gives up that bad ball, there are three more mistakes that lead to that goal. And if it wasn't for against Colombia, he had a play where it was the bicycle kick that he ends up missing with his hands. The other four goals weren't really on Matt Turner. Those are individual errors mm -hmm. that his teammates are making. So maybe you put out some of those fires before they happen. Matt Turner has a little bit more confidence. Matt Turner's a little bit more sure of himself in goal because I think he's got the intangibles to be a good goalkeeper. Maybe not upper to, to middle half of, of the Premier League, but certainly uh, in a top five league. Maybe La Liga? We'll never know.